Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is Blue City DIY, and today I'm going to be installing a USB 3.0 PCIe expansion card into Reptar, my computer. The reason why I went with a PCIe expansion card um, hub instead of an external hub with a power supply was I've, I think they just look really clunky. I think they're really hard to cable manage appropriately for. They seem to make them in really awkward housings that just don't fit neatly anywhere and also I've had a lot of issues with hubs both at work and personally where they don't provide enough power to peripherals or they'll get it'll actually be that you can't have all of the ports working at once and a whole slew of issues so when I found one that fit into a PCIe slot a one slot too so it can go into any slot on my motherboard then I was pretty pumped and I decided to go with that for more expansion um, now it was very easy to install, just popped it into the slot, and then the one thing though, you do definitely need to install the drivers. I tried to run it without installing the drivers, and although power was getting to the devices, which is a good sign that it's working, it would not read and the computer did not see it as a um, USB port. So um, installing the drivers was pretty quick, I actually ended up using the disk that came with the um, PCIe card um, using my external disk drive and it was installed no issue. And right after installing the drivers, I was able to run things on the card with no problem. I didn't have to reboot or anything like that, which was pretty cool. Um, and I did immediately try plugging four peripherals into the card right away to make sure all the ports were working. I hooked up an external hard drive, a USB flash drive, a um, SD card reader and also an Arduino Uno. And I did some tests with all those peripherals. I was able to read and write data on all of them. And on the Arduino, I actually tried uploading a sketch, one of the example blink sketches that makes the LED blink on and off and it worked without an issue. I then did a read and write speed test with my flash drive, which was actually the only 3.0 device that I had connected. I wanted to see exactly what the speeds were for the ports. Now I wrote a large um, video project file from my scratch disk, which is an SSD, because I wanted to also get the fastest speed off of my computer as well. Now the folder was about three gigs, and to write it to the flash drive while it was connected to the card, I got about 12 megabytes per second, which isn't too bad. Um, but when I plugged it into a port that was directly connected to the motherboard, I was getting about 14 to 15 megabytes per second. So there's about three megabyte per second difference, which amounts to about 45 seconds to a minute difference in read and write speed. Now that isn't too bad, but that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're looking for a ex USB expansion that would be used solely to read and write large pieces of data from your computer to external drives and vice versa. Now for me, I got the card mostly so that I could have more peripherals plugged in, things like Arduino, um, MIDI keyboards, things like that without having a huge cable mess so then I can keep it plugged in all the time. So I'm not too concerned about that difference in read and write speed. And like I said, it's not too noticeable. It's just something to keep in mind. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the card. It was also really inexpensive. It was about 15 bucks on Amazon and some of the better hubs that are powered, uh, which is really important if you're going to be running a lot of peripherals at once, are actually cost way more than that and are clunkier and there's no guarantee that they'll even be working in the same way. So with all that in mind, um, I definitely recommend the, car uh, the PCIe card if you're looking for something that has a small footprint, is economical, and is also guaranteed to work. That's been all for today's episode. If you'd like to toss me a thumbs up, leave your questions, comments below. Find me on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram for all the behind the scenes nonsense, along with a lot of cats lately. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.